it's it's so implanted in my memory, and I can just I can just think about it, you know, just recalling the the memory and the experience and the feelings and stuff. And uh, and we were uh, Skipper Switzer and I. I mean, we were just so fortunate the way it turned out. Um, you know, we we made the decisions the best we could. Just just to set the scene real quick, it was a regular normal daytime. In fact. The flight had been, uh, I've got this written down. It, I think it was a 3V5, uh -huh. 3V5, three F-14s against five A-7s or something like that. Yeah. I mean, it was a fun flight. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's not a lot of afterburner and high G, but there's a lot of radar work, a lot of tally hose and crew coordination and stuff. Nice flight, beautiful afternoon, middle, middle of the Indian Ocean. We come back, we catch the cable, and uh, and immediately I'm sitting upright in my seat, reflexively I'm holding the lower ejection handle. My brain goes into uh, you know overdrive. Have you ever been in a car accident? I haven't. Have, no, fortunately. Okay, so anybody that's been in a car accident, or you know, or if you, whatever, bicycle accident or whatever, your brain goes into overspeed. Mm -hmm. My brain's doing this. I've got you know dozens of thoughts, many of which I can still remember. Mm -hmm. But I, the, the underlying thought was, if I pull this handle, there's no going back. And I don't want to pull this handle if, if I don't need to eject. Mm -hmm. So we roll down the flight deck, and this all happens in one second. Mm -hmm. So we roll down the flight deck, and at, as we're you know probably halfway down, we, and we happen to catch the four wire. So the normal run out is pretty far along the deck anyway. And after a second, uh, Skipper Switzer goes, eject, eject. And his tone of voice was kind of like, what are you waiting for? You know, but <laughs> yeah. uh, just urgency. So uh, I pulled the handle. I pulled the handle as soon as he said E, because I knew what he was going to say. Yeah, yeah. I pulled the handle. And then I remember the smoke from the canopy being blown. And then I basically blacked out, which is very disappointing to me. But, but yeah. uh, then I remember... I started to, my brain started to boot up as I was flying through the air, starting to fall, parachute open, and I, just before I hit the water. And so I went up, uh, the, the LSO said I went up as high as the tails of the A7s on the flight deck. Wow. So those are 16 feet, so I was probably 75 feet above the water or something, started to fall. Yeah. Skipper Switzer uh, came out second, and the plane had to have tilted left, so he went splashing across the water. Mm-hmm. Didn't get a parachute. Oh God! So, so I was lucky. My life preserver flew eight, inflated. I popped up to the surface. I was bobbing like a cork, and I saw one of the coolest things I've ever seen. And that is, you know, I'm right off the nose of my F-14. The canopy's gone. It's floating, and then the carrier's going by right behind it. Oh my God! And I'm going, that looks cool. Wow. Were well, you not scared? <laughs> Well, I was still, actually, I was extremely happy because I said, I survived. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, right away, I, it's like, you know, it's not a tourist thing. You got something to do. So I want to get out of my parachute. So I went to undo my Coke fittings and my gloves were wet. So I went like this and my gloves just flung off. <laughs> and I go, that's cool. <laughs> and I'm sitting there going, you know, I need... I need things to work right. And so doing that was good. Doing Undoing my parachute fittings was good. Then I realized I'm tangled up on my parachute. Then the helicopter comes over because it's the plane guard. He was in the perfect place. He's coming around the back. He saw the plane go over, came right around, came on top of me. I gave him a thumbs up and they flew away. Oh, lovely. Could they say <laughs> thumbs up. <laughs> Well, I thought they just flew away, but actually they went to, to check on Skipper Switzer, mm -hmm. the pilot. But he was behind me, and I was not even thinking about him. I mean, I my brain was 100% with my own problem. Mm -hmm. uh, he was behind me. He saw that I was messing with my parachute, so he waved them back over to me. They came. So, so this is all, you know, going on behind me while they're flying around. <clears throat> as I... As I undid my lines, I'm starting to back out of my parachute. I um, I realized I was tangled up in the in the uh, shroud lines, the nylon cords. 
Well, in Pensacola, they taught you to do that. They say, stay calm, calmly back out of it. That wasn't working. And I was impatient. I go, I'm, I'm getting out of here. In fact, I'm getting more tangled up. Mm-hmm. And I really, in my mind, this is when I'm, I started to go, I mean, f- from being an aviation fan, I read books about, you know, survival equipment. I read books about aviators. I knew that guys had been dragged underwater by their yeah. parachutes. And I go, I don't want to go through that. So, so I went to cut myself out. This is a, uh, this is a uh, plug for training. When I went to pull my shroud line cutter, I didn't even think about it. I just went, psh, popped it out. You said you watched the interviews, but, mm-hmm. but I mean, I was, I never failed to be amused by the fact that my shroud line cutter was duct tape closed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, So that. here I am with my thumbnail trying to find the end of the duct tape, you know, and so I found it, unpeeled it, popped open the uh, switchblade and cut my way out. And then the helicopter came back. They, I put the, the uh, harness around me. They lifted me up. I still had some shroud lines. They dropped me back down. One of the most amazing things was that switchblade shroud line cutter was incredibly sharp. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I cut through those lines like that. They pull me up in the water, up in the helicopter. And so I'm safe and, you know, I'm in the helicopter, which, which is a great feeling. I can imagine. So then I hear them talking to you, and this the total elapsed time is about three minutes. But you know, then I hear them talking and they said we lost the pilot. And I thought that meant, you know, we lost it. We've lost him. And I, I just really my heart sunk. And then they said, No, no, there he is over there. What they meant is they'd lost sight of him. Right. So I go, you know, don't so anyway, they picked him up. And um, the first thing that uh, I said to him when he got in the in the helicopter was, "I goes, Skipper, we didn't do anything wrong, right? We had to eject." He goes, "Yeah, by we had to eject." <laughs> so anyway, it was uh, it was it was really a uh, an incredible experience for me because you know the, the water was warm, it was daytime, um, the the stresses were went quickly, et cetera. But but Mike, here's a good chance to comment on. The Navy or any organization that puts a lot of effort and manpower into saving air crews, you know, our our AMEs, our parachute riggers, all the guys that prep that equipment and follow the rules and the inspections every day, because when you need it, you it's got to be ready, you know. And in our case, everything worked. So, well, that's good news, and uh, obviously a, a nice outcome for everybody. Yeah, and and then the next time when I uh, I was I couldn't fly for a few days because the flight surgeon wanted to complete his his uh, investigation. So I go flying on uh, like five days later. I man up the plane with Magic Morris, uh, former F eight pilot and and another you know bright light of the Tomcat community, and, and mm-hmm. we're manning up. We're standing on the plane, tightening our harnesses, and he goes, "Now bio." We probably won't have to eject this flight. <laughs> Thanks, man. Brilliant.